Hello, I'm Wayne Batten, living in Nashville. I'm a retired school teacher, and I'm on the faculty of the Dickens Universe. Today, I'd like to share a favorite passage from David Copperfield. Many people will remember the visit of the Murdstones to Aunt Betsy in Dover, when Aunt Betsy delivers a severe reproof to brother and sister. Within David's hearing, I want to note, the passage is on page 223 in the Penguin edition, chapter 14. I want to consider this in the context of the entire novel, looking both backwards to earlier scenes and forwards to later scenes. The literary terms for this are analepsis, backwards, and prolepsis, forwards. So here is Betsy Trotwood speaking to Mr. Birdstone, who thinks he's going to claim David and take him back to the factory. Do you think I don't know, said my aunt, turning a deaf ear to the sister and continuing to address the brother and to shake her head at him with infinite expression, what kind of life you must have led that poor, unhappy, misdirected baby? Do you think I don't know what a woeful day it was for the soft little creature when you first came in her way, smirking and making great eyes at her, I'll be bound, as if you couldn't say bo to a goose. I never heard anything so elegant, said Miss Murdstone. Do you think I can't understand you as well as if I had seen you, pursued my aunt. Now that I do see and hear you, which I tell you candidly is anything but a pleasure to me. Oh, yes, bless us. Who so smooth and silky as Mr. Murdstone at first? The poor, benighted innocent had never seen such a man. He was made of sweetness. He worshipped her. He doted on her boy, tenderly doted on him. He was to be another father to him and they were all to live together in the Garden of Roses, weren't they? Ugh! Get along with you, do, said my aunt. I never heard anything like this person in my life, exclaimed Miss Murdstone. And when you had made sure of the poor little fool, said my aunt, God forgive me that I should call her so, and she gone where you won't go in a hurry, because you had not done wrong enough to her and hers, you must begin to train her, must you? Begin to break her like a poor caged bird and wear her deluded life away in teaching her to sing your notes. When we look at this in light of earlier descriptions, we realize that Aunt Betsy is giving clarification and validation to a portrait of the Murdstones that the boy David cannot really fully give or could not give without speaking out of character. Here, of course, we understand very fully how deceptive Mr. Murdstone has been and how manipulative. Now, if we looked forward later in the narrative, we realize that this passage has an important effect on David because when he attempts to form Dora's mind, as he puts it, he stops. He realizes very possibly that he is too much like Birdstone in his efforts to form Clara uh, Copperfield to his desires. In addition, we learn much later that Betsy Trotwood here has been married 
And like uh, uh, Mrs. Rudge in the earlier novel, Barnaby Rudge, she has been paying her husband to leave her alone. Here we have Bessie's description of that early marriage to David. She gave my hand a squeeze and shook her head. He is nothing now, Trot, less than nothing. But sooner than have him punished for his offenses, as he would be if he prowled about in this country, I give him more money than I can afford at intervals when he reappears to go away. I was a fool when I married him, and I am so far an incurable fool on that subject that, for the sake of what I once believed him to be, I wouldn't have even this shadow of my idle fancy hardly dealt with. For I was in earnest, Trot, if ever a woman was. So here we realize that when Betsy describes Clara Copperfield, she is speaking from her own early experience with her own young man and disappointing husband. Taken together then, I think it is remarkable how this passage works in the context of the novel, both to clarify David's depiction of the Murdstones, validate it, but also to increase our understanding of Betsy Trotwood and ultimately, of course, explain David's important decision not to form Dora. Thank you.